Israeli provocations continue as scale of Gaza damage emerges. A fragile ceasefire between Israel and Palestinian groups Hamas and Islamic Jihad held for a third day on Sunday despite inflammatory threats by the Israeli government and police-backed fascistic attacks by Israeli settlers on Palestinians on the occupied West Bank. The Israeli provocations intensified as more residents in Gaza emerged from their homes on the weekend to survey the massive damage caused by the 11-day Israeli bombardment. The full extent of the destruction became clearer, even as Israeli drones buzzed incessantly overhead. The United Nations said nearly 450 buildings had been damaged, including six hospitals, 53 schools and 11 primary healthcare centers. More than 1,000 housing units in 258 buildings had been destroyed, and another 14,500 homes suffered damage. More than 100,000 people had been internally displaced, and about 10 times that number half the population of the tiny Gaza Strip had little access to piped water because of the destruction of three major desalination plants, as well as power lines and sewage works. At least 248 Palestinians were dead, and 1,948 others injured in Israeli attacks on Gaza, according to the Palestinian Health Ministry. Health authorities in the West Bank separately confirmed 31 deaths in that region, totaling 279 across all Palestinian territories, compared to 12 deaths in Israel. Under these conditions, dozens of Jewish settlers, flanked by heavily armed Israeli special forces, entered the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound and occupied East Jerusalem yesterday, further raising tensions hours after Palestinian worshippers were beaten and assaulted by the Israeli police. Citing witnesses, Palestinian news agency Wafa said Israeli police had earlier on Sunday assaulted Palestinians who were performing dawn prayers at the mosque and excessively beat them in order to make way for Israeli Jewish settlers to storm the compound Islam's third holiest site. It was the violent police storming of the mosque two weeks ago, combined with moves to evict more Palestinians from their homes in the Jerusalem neighborhood of Sheikh Jarrah, that triggered the 11-day conflict. Israeli police also attacked and dispersed a Palestinian protest against the potential evictions on Saturday evening in Sheikh Jarrah. On Sunday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's government stepped up its incitement of these racist layers, on which the caretaker coalition regime depends for its political survival. Finance Minister Yisrael Katz threatened to assassinate leaders of Hamas, which governs Gaza, over any rocket fire from the Gaza Strip. Speaking to the Rishay Bet local radio station, Katz said any rocket fire into southern Israel would be avenged by assassinating Hamas leaders, stressing that this policy was agreed by the Israeli security cabinet before approving the ceasefire on Friday. Netanyahu declared, if Hamas thinks we will tolerate a drizzle of rockets, it is wrong. Vowing to respond with a new level of force, he boasted that Israel had done daring and new things during the conflict without being dragged into unnecessary adventures.